We kicked off the week by telling you guys to keep an eye on Jeff Grimes potentially landing at BYU. Well, it's the end of the week, and Jeff Grimes is now coaching at Kansas. What in the world happened? We'll break that down. We're also talking about a big weekend for BYU, both in football recruiting, as well as on the hardwoods as the Cougars and the Utes do battle in the Holy War. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use that promo code locked on college for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's all courtesy of your friends at Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, uh, let's dive right in on today's show and talk about the Jeff Grimes situation. Now, I started the week on Monday telling you guys to keep an eye on Jeff Grimes. I got some intel over last weekend saying that if things moved quickly and potentially could move quickly, BYU might be capable of getting Jeff Grimes installed as part of their assistant coaching staff as soon as this week. Well, as the week progressed, like many of you, I was just waiting and waiting and waiting some more, just waiting for something to change. And then I started to hear some rumblings Thursday evening about maybe Maybe it was going to take some time for BYU to get the deal done. And then uh, Friday, or even Thursday morning, excuse me. So Wednesday, what was the, what was the timeline here? I'm trying to remember. It's it's all kind of running together. But regardless, uh, Thursday morning, I, I was uh, doing my radio show, DJ and PK on the KSL Sports Zone in Salt Lake City. Got a text from a confidant, I guess I should say a source, saying, hey, uh, Jeff Grimes to BYU is dead. And I'm like, okay, why? And they're like, TBD. Well, and then just felt like 20 minutes later, all of a sudden, here comes a tweet from Ross Dellinger from Yahoo Sports saying, hey, by the way, Jeff Grimes is going to be the new offensive coordinator at the University of Kansas. Now, that would make a lot of sense as to why the deal is dead at BYU because he gets a new gig at Kansas. Now I saw some, some reaction on social media. I sent a, a text immediately out to our uh, subtext community. If you've not signed up for that, by the way, I would encourage you to do so. It's a direct line of communication with myself. I'm getting information real time. The other thing about this is I realized is that uh, as I got the word out about it, that a number of people started uh, saying on social media, well, BYU botched this. Why couldn't they lock him down? Why did they get the job done and get him locked in? Folks, here's the thing. Jeff Grimes is going to remain an offensive coordinator. He was not getting that title at BYU. They already have an offensive coordinator in Aaron Roderick. The other thing about this is offensive coordinator comes with a salary that BYU simply wasn't going to pay Jeff Grimes. Why in the world wouldn't he take that opportunity to go and be the offensive coordinator for the Kansas Jayhawks? And oh, by the way, he gets to work with one of the most talented quarterbacks in all of college football in Jalen Daniels. Now, uh, Daniels has got to be healthy, obviously. He's uh, dealt with a back injury this past season that obviously hampered uh, the production that uh, all of us expected him to have. I had him as the uh, Big 12 preseason player of the year, and he'll very much be in the mix for that once again next year if he's fully healthy. But why in the world wouldn't Jeff Grimes take this opportunity? He gets to remain an offensive coordinator. Gets to remain a highly, highly paid assistant coach. And oh, by the way, coming to BYU and taking on whether it was an assistant head coach title, a run game coordinator title, the offensive line coach title, whatever it was going to be, his responsibilities, it just did not match up in terms of continuing his progression as he hopes to eventually become a head coach. The other thing about this is BYU was not going to pay him coordinator or I guess offensive coordinator salary uh, to match what Kansas is likely to pay him. We'll see what ultimately the the word uh, that comes out of Kansas is in terms of how much he's being compensated for being an offensive coordinator. But it is a loss. It's obviously a hit for BYU because the Cougars would have liked to have had Grimey back inside their football program. He is a guy that is one of the best offensive line coaches, bar none, in this country. And by the way, the other thing about this is is that he's a really, really uh, good uh, coordinator when it comes to kind of the handling the day-to-day things, demanding things of his offense. Now, one of his weaknesses is play calling, and that's ultimately why he had that play calling duty taken away from him uh, in the final stands of his time at BYU and given to Aaron Roderick. 
Uh, but the bigger thing is it's a, it's a hit for BYU not to have him coming to BYU. Now, a couple of you reached out via subtext and asked me, well, Jake, where does BYU pivot now? Who else is BYU looking at? Well, that's the thing. BYU has had a list of guys that they have been talking to. I don't. I am not privy to all of the offensive line coaches that BYU has communicated with. I can remember when they hired Daryl Funk the last go around when they were looking for an offensive line coach. Funk uh, seemed to be a guy that people mentioned. Well, it's a possibility, but there were so many other names out there. Ryan Pugh's name popped up. Uh, there was just there was a bevy of different names that came up during that search, and ultimately BYU uh, brought in Daryl Funk at that point. What I am being told right now is to keep an eye on one name in particular. This comes from a, a source that I am very, very comfortable with. And the bigger uh, thing is that it matches up with a lot of what I would expect Kalani Satake to look to as an offensive line coach, a guy to come in and really hopefully light a fire under an offensive uh, unit, uh, speaking of that old line, that needs a little bit of a kick in the pants to get the most out of it. The name? TJ Woods. Now you're probably wondering who in the world is TJ Woods. Some of you might know this, some of you might not, but TJ Woods crossed paths with Kalani Satake at multiple points. He worked with him at Oregon State uh, during Kalani's uh, short stint there. He's also been all over the country. He played uh, in in the college ranks uh, at let's see, where did he co- play at? He played at uh, Azusa Pacific. Uh, excuse me, not, yeah, Azusa Pacific played, then went to Iowa State for a year uh, to finish up his college playing career. But then he's a uh, coach at Azusa Pacific, New Mexico, Utah. State. State, Wisconsin, Oregon State, Western Kentucky, Utah State, once again, UNLV, and most recently at Georgia Southern. So he has got familiarity having worked in the state of Utah. He's got familiarity having worked alongside Kalani Satake. They're familiar with one another. Is this a done deal that it's going to be TJ Woods that's BYU's next hire? No, I can't say that for certain right now, but it is a name I was told to keep an eye on. Now, the other thing about this was, is the intel I received about Jeff Grimes, I believed it 100%. And essentially, the way things broke down is that Jeff Grimes very much was engrossed in communication and negotiations with BYU. But when Penn State hired away Kansas's offensive coordinator, uh, reading up a little bit on this, Lance Leipold wanted to make a move and find a new offensive coordinator to come in right away and went through a couple of options and ultimately settled on Jeff Grimes. There's no reason to think that BYU botched anything or screwed anything up. It just simply put, Jeff Grimes got a better opportunity than what BYU is offering him. It, it's pretty simple in that regard. The other thing about this is TJ Woods, like I said, his his familiarity with Kalani Satake, having been in the state of Utah in two different stints with the Utah State Aggies. He's got familiar with Gary Anderson, obviously having worked with him both at Oregon State and Wisconsin. He would have familiarity with guys uh, that BYU has on their coaching staff, most particularly Kalani Satake. This would be a very natural addition. Now, I know that a guy from Georgia Southern isn't going to have people saying, wow, that's awesome. We want a guy like that. But the one thing I know about TJ Woods, he's a well-respected coach, and he's got a bevy of experience. His coaching career started back in 2003, a year after his playing career ended. This is a guy who uh, knows uh, what he's doing, and uh, he's coached offensive lines all over the country. He's got an opportunity to maybe step up, and he's currently uh, got the offensive line coach and run game coordinator title at Georgia Southern. It's a very natural elevation potentially to make him both the offensive line coach and run game coordinator at BYU and move on from there. Do you have an idea of who BYU might look at for their other assistant coach right now? The, but no, not really. I don't necessarily have necessarily a name like I do on this TJ Woods thing. But if the TJ Woods thing doesn't work out, then you can throw the Andrew Mitchells out there, the Ryan Pews. Uh, there's other people talking about all kinds of different names when it comes to offensive line coaches. But yeah, just simply put, BYU now has to pivot, but it's not them having to start from scratch in terms of this coaching search. I, I can assure you, BYU has had a list of guys. They have essentially said, okay, what, let's, uh, let's obviously uh, start at the top of our list and work our way down. Obviously, Jeff Grimes, I think, was near or at the top of that list. And now TJ Woods appears to be the next guy BYU, I would say, is uh, looking at extensively to see if he is the right option. Could that uh, come to fruition very, very quickly? Sure, it could. Could it also have BYU's typical, uh, how do I say, it, the bureaucratic process inside Brigham Young University slow down the process to get a guy like TJ Woods hired and on the staff at BYU? Yes, it could. But the other thing about this is don't necessarily fret all that much about how things are being handled on the recruiting 
front. BYU still has Braden Kearsley uh, working there. He's the GA for the offensive line for BYU. Essentially consider him to be the assistant offensive line coach. And he's got a good feel for how BYU is trying to round out this offensive line unit. And they have a lot of offers out to a number of guys in the transfer portal and junior college ranks. And I, I really feel like Braden Kearsley is capable of holding down the fort until they name their next offensive line coach. So keep an eye on TJ Wood's name. I, I'm not saying that it's going to be a done deal, but uh, it appears uh, based on what I am hearing that he is the kind of the next guy that BYU is evaluating extensively. And then obviously though it will pivot a little bit more as things progress. All right, let's talk about the big weekend ahead for BYU on the recruiting front. Uh, they have a bevy of guys out in the transfer portal, the junior college ranks, and even high school athletes who have all got visits scheduled for this weekend. It's a very important weekend for BYU in terms of shoring up uh, at least part of the early signing uh, period, uh, the class that'll be coming into BYU. A number of guys that want to enroll early. If you're transfer portal guys, you're planning on enrolling in January as soon as possible. So there's a lot to get done for BYU. And we'll talk more about that as we continue on right here. Unlocked on Cougars. Now let's talk about our friends over at Prize Picks real quick. Prize Picks is the nation's largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And the best part is it's you versus the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more or less than on two or six, two to six players and their stat projections, and watch the winnings roll in. It's simple as that, my friends. The best part about this is you can have uh, fun both with football and basketball with both of those seasons crossing over right now. They have a, a pick combo projection across football and basketball with their specials league. A league created specially for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, you have LeBron James and Travis Kelsey at 10 and a half combo of three pointers made for James and receptions for Kelsey. It's simple as that, my friends. The best part is you can uh, make your selections, lock them in less than 60 seconds, a couple of taps, and you're on your way. You can see up to 25 times your bet money uh, come rolling back to you if you win with our friends at Prize Picks. That's the best part about it. So get an opportunity to get on it today. Testing your prize pick skills this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can earn, excuse me, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps inside the prize picks app. So start today, my friends. Get over to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use the promo code locked on college for a $100 first deposit match. It's up to $100 matched from our friends at Price Picks. Once again, that's uh, pricepicks.com slash locked on college. Use that promo code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. And check it out, my friends. That's all courtesy of your friends at Price Picks. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us. And I want to remind you guys that Locked On has launched their first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today and on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. It's a really, really fun feature. If you're trying to get caught up on a daily basis in terms of the uh, sports world out there, you have a specific team or a league you're interested in, Locked On's got you covered with that. So I encourage you guys uh, to subscribe to it uh, once again right away. All right, let's talk about the weekend ahead for BYU. There is a number of athletes uh, making their way uh, to BYU this weekend, whether they're unofficial or official visits, they will have a bevy of different guys coming in, some from the high school ranks, some from the junior college ranks, even some guys via the transfer portal reportedly could be coming into BYU. But there's a couple of names I want to point out that it seems to be bigger than others. The first, it appears, is a big recruiting battle uh, for a guy by the name of Kikai Burnett. He is from Honolulu, Hawaii, a place for Punahou High School out there in Hawaii, a high-level three-star prospect, recently backed off, of a, backed off of his commitment to Oregon State. BYU had offered him way back in February, not February, January of this year and had been in the mix, but he ultimately committed to Oregon State. Well, with Jonathan Smith making the move to Michigan State, Burnett backed off his uh, commitment and is now visiting BYU this weekend. Now, he will also visit Michigan State next weekend, according to 24-7 Sports, obviously giving Jonathan Smith and his staff a chance to maybe uh, change his mind and get him to go to East Lansing. But this is a big opportunity for BYU because the one thing about Kikai Burnett is he has got all of the skills you want from a pass rush type guy and BYU absolutely needs to upgrade their pass rush six, two or six, three, depending on where you look, 240 ish pounds. I uh, really looks the part as a very, very good 
uh, edge uh, pass rusher. And BYU would love nothing more than to have him in the mix. The best part is he's the number 42 ranked edge player in the 2024 recruiting class. And more importantly, is the number four uh, prospect in the state of Hawaii. Now, a lot of you, when we've talked recruiting in the past, have lamented the fact that BYU is not getting as much talent out of the state of Hawaii as they used to. Well, here's the thing. Everybody and their dog, quite literally, when it comes to recruiting, is looking uh, to the islands to bring in talent. But BYU has an opportunity here to bring a guy like Burnett in and really sell him on the program. And I hope it works out. Honestly, I hope it does. Now, there's been other word out there that Sam Levitt, the four-star uh, freshman quarterback from Michigan State, has had offers from BYU, Utah, BYU and Utah, among others. Uh, it sounds like Levitt is going to be looking at all options. I would imagine he comes in for a visit to see, to see what BYU is all about. The thing about this is, is with these visits, when it comes to the transfer portal, they're really only like one day. Now, honestly, they are that quick. Uh, currently, Sam Levitt is a three-star transfer portal tar. Uh, uh, three-star transfer portal quarterback, the 19th ranked in the uh, current transfer portal cycle, according to 24-7 Sports. I think this would be a very, very savvy pickup because the best part about Levitt is he's got ties to BYU. His father played for the Cougars. His older brother, Dallin, did play for BYU for a short time before transferring to Utah State. Uh, and Levitt's got the dual threat capability that BYU craves in this offense. The other name to keep an eye on with regards uh, to the transfer portal is the name of Taylor uh, um, man, I've just forgotten the name. A uh, Taylor, jeez, oh, it's the Boise State quarterback. Uh, Taylor Green, excuse me, color green. There you go, Taylor Green. Uh, according to VJ Reigns, who does a great job covering Boise State up there, he has plans to visit BYU among a number of other schools over the next week plus as he uh, determines what his next step is going to be. He hasn't necessarily. Uh, uh, ruled out returning to Boise State, uh, but B.J. Rain said it's uh, unlikely that he returns to play for the Broncos. The one thing about Green is he's got a bevy of different options out there uh, with regards to other programs recruiting him, but BYU, it sounds like he's going to get at least a visit from him, uh, and that would be a positive sign. It'll probably be just like one of those one-day visits like I just mentioned for a guy like Sam Levitt and or Taylor Green. you got to put your best foot forward. you got to get them around campus, show them what's uh, up with your facilities, get them kind of ingrained into what you're trying to do, and sell them. Yeah, it's the biggest thing. You got to get them on campus and sell them hard. So it's a big, big opportunity uh, if and when both of those guys show up. And the other I, I, th guy to keep an eye on, uh, this came in from 24-7 Sports, is Isaiah Glass. He's an offensive tackle slash guard prospect from Arizona State. He has two years of eligibility remaining, uh, leaving Arizona State. He's actually an ASU uh, um, legacy. His dad played for the Sun Devils, but apparently he's looking at other options. 6'5", 295 pounds. We've talked about the fact that BYU really does need to upgrade their talent in the trenches, both offensive line and defensive line wise. And the fact that Glass is saying he's got uh, BYU is one of the programs he's focused in on most. That's a positive thing for BYU. And I think it'll be a similar circumstance to these other quarterbacks we've talked about. And it really any of these transfer portal guys, it, it's, it's a whirlwind shotgun type wet wedding type situation. You got interest? Great. You want to come play here? Yes. All right. Let's make it. Let's make a deal and get you in here. That that's in some cases that's really how quickly it can go. It, it can be that quick, but there's no time to waste. And the nice part is, it sounds like BYU is absolutely intent on getting any and all prospects that have any interest and uh, they, they deem a Power Five capable guy getting him on campus and really showing them what BYU is all about. And that's all you really can do at this point. You got to get them on campus, show them what BYU is all about, and then let the chips fall where they may. Uh, will you land all these guys? No, because there's just, there's 132 other teams at the FBS level who would like a piece of a number of these athletes. But the thing is, BYU uh, can throw around the weight that it's a Power 5 football program. In the case of the quarterback situation, or in this case with Isaiah Glass, an offensive lineman, you can say there are playing time opportunities right away for y'all. That, that's the other thing you can sell right now if you're the Cougars. You can come in and be a part of our build in the Big 12. You can help us uh, really uh, build off of a 5-7 and seven season, a disappointing year. We want to get bowl eligible. We want to make a run at a Big 12 title early on in our tenure relatively. You can be a part of that. That's the big pitch BYU needs to be making to all these athletes. They've got a number, like I said, of junior college and high school athletes also making visits this weekend. It's all going to uh, essentially become like this big giant uh, stew in a way uh, of your different parts. You're going to throw some transfer portal guys in there. You're going to throw some uh, junior college guys. Luke uh, Tuo Malatai, uh, defensive tackle prospect. Uh, uh, he uh, tweeted yesterday that he is on his way up to Utah for his official visit this weekend. Junior college guys, high school. 
high school athletes and also the transfer portal. You got to kind of be able to combine it all and uh, make it work out. The one thing that uh, Tom Homo, his tweet earlier this week, talking about the fact that BYU's got to have guys who understand what BYU's mission is, are bought in fully, and are intent on really building with this program. I think that's kind of a shot across the bow for everybody involved, whether it's the coaches, the administrators, and even the athletes themselves. BYU needs to have guys who are bought in to this football program if they truly want to have success. And that's it's it's a tricky, tricky thing with the transfer portal because a lot of this, really, you're selling guys on opportunities to play and also NIL. There's money involved. There's no doubt about that. And a lot of guys are going to come in and say, okay, I'm interested in you guys. What do you got NIL opportunity-wise? And that's got to be a part of the calculation here. So very very interesting weekend ahead it feels like for BYU but I think it's an important weekend that BYU needs to capitalize on if at all possible and I'm looking forward to seeing what the results are we'll see uh, ultimately where things uh, shake out but uh, I would keep an eye in particular Kakai Burnett that seems like a very very nice opportunity for BYU to flip a guy from Oregon State potentially Michigan State and get him into your football program we all want BYU to get better pass rush well a guy like that sure seems to be a part of the solution to to that problem and we'll see how the weekend goes for BYU and recruiting. All right, we'll talk about your guys' questions. I asked you guys in the subtext community uh, what questions you had this week. We'll get to that. We'll also talk a little bit more about BYU and Utah and hoops. We'll get to all that here momentarily on Locked on Cougars. First, a word on our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What, bring home, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride-or-die vehicle alive, my friends. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust exhaust kits, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win, my friends. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. It's all courtesy of your friends at eBay Motors. Eligible items only exclusions may apply and of course eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at Perry Homes. Now, Perry Homes wants to help you guys out in the home building process. Whether you're looking to build your first home, you're ready to upgrade to your dream home, Perry Homes has got a house for you and literally anything in between those two extremes. But for 50 years, Perry Homes has been Utah's premier home builder with communities throughout the state. They have many communities, home designs, and price points, all designed with you, the consumer, in mind, my friends. They have beautiful communities in Davis, Salt Lake, Tooele, and Utah counties, also multiple communities down in southern Utah in Washington County near St. George. They got options across the board for you guys. They're offering over 50 unique home designs from Ramblers to two stories to townhomes and other options all in between those. And even have quick moving homes available if you're ready to move now and get on with it. So visit perryhomesutah.com to see what's new in Utah's finest neighborhoods. That's Perry, P-E-R-R-Y, perryhomesutah.com to learn more now. For 50 years, Utah has been coming home to Perry Homes. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Hope you're having a fantastic Friday uh, whenever you hear this. Uh, I want to encourage you guys once again to sign up for the subtext community. Now, it is a subscription-based model. Uh, you get 14 days free. It's a direct line of communication with myself. Uh, we are, I think we're in like the, we're already, we're well into like the 30 subscribers on Subtext. We'd love nothing more than to have as many of you uh, who uh, would uh, be interested in it to sign up. What it is, essentially think of it as texting back and forth with myself. It goes directly to your phone. I can get updates mid-game to you guys it, 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 on stuff with BYU. I'm out of practice and notice something and get you uh, details on that type of stuff. And the best part is you also going to ask your questions. And that's what I threw out on the subtext community to our current subscribers earlier this week. And so what questions you guys got for me this week? Well, the first uh, question uh, came in from Weston Birch. He says, it seems like BYU hasn't been very active in the portal. You know, they're waiting on the new offensive line coach to get in place before they start making offers. Well, the thing about it is they have not waited at all because they've got offers out to like guys like Rod Green, who's a uh, junior college prospect out of Kansas, Coffeeville College, uh, Coffeeville Community College, if I'm not mistaken. And he's announced that he's going to be making a commitment relatively soon. But BYU is not wasting time. We already talked about Isaiah Glass. They're not uh, slowing down because they need no line coach in place. I already mentioned earlier on on today's show that Braden Kearsley understands what BYU is all about. He played at BYU. He decided to come back here as an offensive analyst, a GA, whatever you want to term it. 
to work with BYU's offensive line. And in the interim, until BYU does get a new offensive line coach installed, whether it's TJ Woods or another person out there, uh, keep an eye on what Braden Kearsley is doing. The other thing about this is Braden Kearsley uh, is a guy who uh, wants to take the next step and become an offensive line coach, a full-time assistant coach. And this is an opportunity to prove himself. That's the other thing about this is he's not wasting time uh, in saying, well, I'm going to just wait until I have a coach to direct me where I'm going to go. He's taking the initiative and going after it. That's actually a really admirable thing to see it from a guy like Braden Kearsley. All right, next question up. I came in uh, via Brandon. He says, I good to hear about the portal. I've seen your videos this week. He says, my bell bag question would be who uh, would you prefer the Cougars get as a quarterback in the portal? And who do you think they actually get if that's a different answer? That's an interesting question there, uh, Brandon, because I I've talked about this earlier on in the week. I, I know the BYU got interested in Taylor, got interest in Taylor and Green, Jaden Maiava out of UNLV. We already mentioned Sam Levitt earlier on on today's show. Uh, Brandon Sluka is a guy from Holy Cross at the FCS level that uh, BYU and seemingly everybody else is after. BYU has apparently offered uh, uh, the, uh, Curtis Rourke uh, from Ohio. BYU is looking at all options and really evaluating all things. Do I have an idea of what BYU's wish list is quarterback wise right now? No, I do not. But I think the BYU is capable of bringing in a pretty high level player. That's the thing about this. We already mentioned that Sam Levitt, he is a former four star prospect and he's the number 19 quarterback in the transfer portal, according to 24 seven sports. There are 18 other guys that 24 seven sports considers to be a better talent or a better quarterback uh, in this uh, transfer portal cycle. That means BYU has a bevy of options. Can they chase some of the top dogs? Sure. Are they likely to land one of those? I'm talking about the likes of a Kyle McCord from Ohio State, a Dylan Gabriel from Oklahoma. They can throw their hat in the ring if they want to. I just don't think they're going to land those guys. They'll seem to have uh, ideas of where they're going to go before they even enter the portal. But BYU is still very much capable of getting in on, uh, with the conversations because you can point to, I know that this past year with the quarterback play was less than stellar, but it's not too far in the distant past, my friends, that BYU's put back-to-back -back quarterbacks in the NFL in both Jaron Hall and Zach Wilson. Yes, they may not be performing at the NFL level, but BYU has proven they can get you to the NFL. That is a very very, very good thing to have in your back pocket when you're when it comes to recruiting. So uh, keep an eye on that. I, I guess I don't necessarily have a firm answer, but I would love to see a guy like Sam Levitt pick BYU. It'd be really fun to see him. He's a BYU legacy via his father. His brother obviously had that, uh, let's say, a cantankerous relationship with Brigham Young University. But uh, nonetheless, I, I do think that there are other options that BYU can look at. All right, Danny Drew asked this. How bad is it that Miles Davis entered the transfer portal? Now, uh, some of you, may, I, meant, I meant to mention this earlier. Some of you probably saw it via social media. BYU running back Miles Davis became the sixth member of the BYU football program to enter the NCAA transfer portal. Uh, I can't say I'm necessarily all that surprised because Davis has been buried on the depth chart. Let's be honest, folks. Aiden Robbins, LJ Martin, Hinkley Ropati. Uh, it just feels like there are a number of guys that have either come into the program and supplanted him or were in the program and just passed him by on the depth chart. He's looking for his next opportunity. The other thing about this is we forget sometimes with the transfer portal that they can go into the portal, look at their options, and withdraw their name and come back to the football program they originally were intent to leave. So I'm not saying that Miles Davis is out of the running of returning to BYU, but I simply think he's looking for an opportunity to show what he's capable of. Injuries have absolutely hampered his career at BYU. He had a, a mere image of bone breaks in both feet. Uh, it was a two years ago, if I recall correctly, uh, that really hampered him. And he's dealt with other injuries. He's had hamstring injuries and the like. So the tough part is for a guy like him, he's got to prove he can stay healthy and show what he's capable of. But uh, I can't blame him uh, for looking for a new opportunity. And I, I, I'll be honest also, if Aiden Robbins decides to come back, we have not heard officially, but I'm leaning towards him coming back to BYU next year. And if LJ Martin is still in the fold, there's not just a lot of reps to go around for a guy like Miles Davis. So yeah, I can understand why he's looking around and evaluating his options and looking for his next step. Uh, next question. Uh, Justin asked this. What are some of the other players BYU has talked to in different position groups, if you know by chance? Uh, I already mentioned some of the names earlier on in today's show. Uh, I can tell you BYU's evaluated guys in the linebacking uh, room. I don't have specific names on that, or I guess linebacking position in the transfer portal. They've also looked at some safeties, according to a person that I talked to. They're even looking at wide receivers and tight ends as well. Now, I, I do think that uh, there are options uh, for BYU at all positions to go into the transfer portal and get guys but the other thing about it is they got to be the right fit. And that's the other thing about this is it's never going to be a perfect science. You can think this guy's a home run. He's going to come to BYU and love it. And they get here, they're downright miserable. So 
I, I do know that BYU is evaluating all options, but uh, they're very clearly intent on upgrading the defensive line, the offensive line, and the quarterback positions in particular. But uh, they will not turn down a stud player if it's the right person, and it doesn't really matter the position right now. All right, final question comes from John. He says, Jake, thanks for, uh, for the mailbag edition. I've got a two-parter. Uh, number one. So far, the men's basketball team is playing well. Can we rely on this? Or will it will be similar to the football season where they faded. I think that this has got some staying power, John. Honestly, uh, BYU football, I think a number of us that watched the games felt like things were kind of resting on a knife's edge for BYU for most of the season. And ultimately, it kind of went to one side and they ended up with that five-game losing streak. Uh, but I think basketball has proven so far that they've got staying power. They play as a team. They kind of go as a team and they have different guys stepping up and contributing in big spots. That's a very, very nice thing to see. Now, the Big 12 schedule is going to be the better litmus test for BYU. They have set up a, let's be frank, a, a less than a stout a non-conference slate. They play at Utah tomorrow night, obviously in their lone uh, true road game of the non-conference slate. And I'm looking forward to the game. I think if BYU plays their game, they win that game by double digits. I, I'm confident BYU can go to the Huntsman Center and win this game. By the way, the Huntsman Center is sold out. It's going to feel like that those that era in the late 90s, I guess mid to late 90s, early 2000s, when Rick Majerus and Steve Cleveland slash Dave Rose were going at it uh, between the Utes and the Cougars. I'm looking forward to it. I am making. I am planning to be at the Huntsman Center for that game and. The environment should be very, very good. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But I think if BYU plays their game, they have the capability to run away with this one on the home turf of Utah. Now, the second part of uh, John's question real quick. It says, thank you for all that you do on your podcast, which must take a lot of time. Have you considered a co-host? If so, this trucker, I didn't know you were a trucker, John, uh, doesn't mind talking to keep his mind from going crazy. Ha ha, JK. Thanks, Jake. Well, I can tell you this much, John. I have considered bringing on a co-host, but the biggest thing for me right now in the circumstance of life that I am in, a number of you know that I am torn in multiple directions. I, I am a, an executive producer uh, for a high-level radio show, a morning drive radio show. I'm also uh, running a lot of the back-end operations with regards to managing our producers at the KSL Sports Zone. I have that title, executive producer, so I, I do a lot of training and that type of stuff. I'm a dad. I've got three kids, and including a newborn who's just over two months old. I'm very busy there. Biggest thing, the reason I have not brought on a co-host at this point with this podcast is I'm able to fit this podcast in when I have pockets of time to do it. That's the tough part about bringing a co-host on. Is essentially, you've got to be able to work around my schedule if that's how it's going to work out. So uh, if you're interested, sure, we can talk. We'd have, uh, we can probably get back to doing some more of this uh, coming up in the offseason. We used to do our uh, fan uh, Fridays where we'd actually have a co-host, uh, just a, you out there in Cougar Nation, uh, join me for an episode on Fridays. Uh, we can get back to doing some more of that. But yeah, that really, I guess, pulling back the curtain, the reason why I have not ever brought on a co-host full-time to this podcast is just because I have got uh, just a crazy crazy schedule and I don't want to subject anybody else to being yanked around by my uh, nut nutsy schedule uh, and trying to say, okay, I've got an hour here. Let's knock out the podcast now. And then the next day it's completely opposite. It just, it, it works best with me right now doing it solo. And I know that it can get a little monotonous with just my voice on the podcast, but uh, truthfully, I do appreciate all y'all for your support of the, of this venture. It, it would for five plus years into it. I know a number of you have been riding with me for five plus years. I hope I have improved over the, over that time in some ways, but nonetheless, I appreciate every single one of you. This is the first time you're listening to the podcast. Hope you come back tomorrow. If you've been listening since day one to the like over 1500 episodes. Now if you've caught every single one of them. I thank you all the same. And it just, it really does mean the world to me that you guys find this product of worth. So, uh, John, if you want to hop on sometime, I'd love to have you on and, uh, keep on trucking my man. Obviously truckers are the backbone of a lot of what we do in this great country. So thank you uh, for doing what you do on your end. All right. So there you go. Uh, that's all I got for you guys on this Friday edition of the podcast. So I guess the name to know today, TJ Woods, keep an eye on that. Uh, file it away uh, for future reference. If BYU hires the guy, hey, you can say Jake Hatch had, had it out there first. And if it uh, pans out like earlier this week where I was telling you Jeff Grimes was like an imminent hire for BYU and suddenly he pops up as the new offensive coordinator at Kansas, well, you can say Jake Hatch was dead wrong. So uh, that's the glory of doing what I do. Sometimes I get it right. Sometimes it goes a little bit off the rails and we get it wrong. But nonetheless, thank you for being uh, with us every single day. As we call you every day or two on the podcast, thank you for making it your first listen of the day. And of course, uh, come back uh, and join us next time. We'll probably do a postcast edition tomorrow night after the BYU-Utah game. Whatever happens, we'll break it down. And obviously on Monday, 
Uh, we're talking transfer portal, recruiting news. Uh, if BYU has hired a new offensive line coach by then, who knows? We'll have it all covered for you regardless. And, of course, thank you for your support of the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.